So your drive pipe length, well, I'll just read this to you so you have a full understanding of it. The length of the drive pipe from the water source to the pump also affects the stroke period. In other words, how long each cycle is. A longer drive pipe provides a longer stroke period. There are maximum and minimum lengths for the drive pipe. Uh, the drive pipe is best made from galvanized steel. Uh, more rigid pipe is better, but Schedule 40 PVC can be used with good results. The more rigid galvanized pipe will result in higher pumping efficiency and allow higher pumping heights. Rigidity of the drive pipe seems to be more important in this efficiency than the straightness of the drive pipe. And I found that to be true also. Uh, drive pipe length and size ratios are apparently based on empirical data. Information from the University of Georgia publications, see the footnote, provides an equation from Calvert, 1958, describing the output and stability of ram pump installations in relation to the ratio of the drive pipe length to the drive pipe diameter. The best range is in length to diameter ratio of between 150 and 1000. Equations to use to determine those lengths are minimum and maximum. Minimum L equals 150 times inlet pipe size and maximum L equals 1000 times inlet pipe size. So let's look at that. Um, if your inlet pipe is 1.5 inches, say, and we use the 150 number, you have 225 inches. We'll divide that by 12 to get it into feet. So your minimum length would be about 18.75 feet. And then we'll do it again, 1.5 inch times 1,000 be about 1,500 inches over 12 is about 125 feet. And that would be your maximum, maximum for a 1.5 inch pipe or 1.5 inch ram pump. Um, as I mentioned before, mine is about 117 from the water source to the uh, to the pump. I did not want that entire pump to be pulsing and flexing because it's made of PVC. If it were galvanized, I might be less concerned, and that longer stroke might give me a little bit more efficiency because there's a lot more water's weight and inertia energy in that pipe moving at a given time, slamming against the valve and providing pressure. But it's a really tricky balance between those two, so you're best to stay within these parameters. Um, let's see, drive pipe length example. Uh, well, yeah, here they did the example. Minimum length should be, yeah, 187 or 15.6 feet. Maximum length is the same. One, oh, they're doing for one and a quarter would be about 104 feet. And so that's another part of why I did this, because I looked at one and a half inch and I looked at one and a quarter, knowing I might need to bump back to one and a quarter because I wasn't sure that my supply volume would hold enough for a 1.5 inch. And so that's another part of the reason I did this. See, at 125, I'd be okay, but at 104 feet on a one and a quarter inch pump or one and a quarter inch pipe, then I would actually be too, too long a run. And so that's where the standpipe comes in. So I'll just read the standpipe piece here to you next. Many hydraulic ram installations show a standpipe installed on the inlet pipe. The purpose of this pipe is to allow the water hammer shock wave to dissipate at a given point. Standpipes are only necessary if the inlet pipe will be longer than the recommended maximum length. For instance, if the inlet pipe were to be 150 feet in length in the above example, where the maximum inlet length should only be 104, or in my case with inch and a half, 125. The standpipe, if needed, is generally placed in the line the same distance from the ram as the recommended maximum length indicated. Um, and in my case, I chose to do it differently because of the terrain I'm in and, um, and just the logistics of the site that I'm working on. It was hard to find a good, a good place where I could uh, kind of conquer the terrain. There's a lot of mud and swamp and uh, rough terrain around me there, so I, I chose what I chose. I ended up doing 35 feet, which I think is a little bit longer than, uh, than the minimum length recommended for a 1.5 inch pump, but not much. Uh, if I had gone longer, I probably could have gotten a little bit better efficiency, um, but I may go back and change that at some point in the future and uh, put steel pipe in, but steel pipe is extremely expensive, so for now, we're running PVC. Now let's see. 
The standpipe must be vertical and extend vertically at least one foot higher than the elevation of the water source. And me, I would say at least two feet higher or even a little more. Uh, it's amazing how much those levels can fluctuate uh, under uh, changing water load conditions, so to speak. No water should exit the pipe during operation or even perhaps a few drops can cascade out over it at the cycle at most. Most recommendations suggest that the standpipe should be three sizes larger than the inlet pipe. The supply pipe between the standpipe and the water source should be one size larger than the inlet pipe. This is very, very important. Um, so if you're running an inch and a half ram pump, you want a two inch supply line coming into your standpipe. If you use an inch and a half supply line, your ram pump is always going to be short of water. You have to remember, we're working with gravity here and the amount of volume you can deliver to that uh, pump matters tremendously because that pump takes on even a little bit of air it will disrupt the pump's operation decrease its efficiency and possibly even make it shut off on you so you want to make sure your supply line is always one size larger than the drive pipe on the pump um, so that's an important thing to note so if you're making an inch and a half ram pump you want two inch supply line to your standpipe if you have to put a standpipe in. Um, if you're making a three inch ram pump, you want a four inch supply line. If you're making a half inch ram pump, you want a three quarter inch supply line at least. I'd say probably just go to one inch. Just do it. It's not that much more expensive. Uh, but that's an important thing. You want to make sure you have plenty of water volume coming into the standpipe so the standpipe stays full of water. The standpipe not only dissipates the shock wave, but it also acts as a water buffer place. It, it makes sure that you don't deplete the amount of water that you need to keep the pump running smoothly. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, and I'll read the rest of this piece to you. The reason behind this is simple. If the inlet pipe is too long, the water hammer shock wave will travel farther, slowing down the pump pulses of the ram. Also, in many instances, there may actually be interference with the operation of the pump due to the length of the travel of the shock wave. The standpipe simply allows an outlet to the atmosphere to allow the shock wave to go somewhere. Again, this is not necessary unless the pipe will have to be longer than the recommend ma recommended maximum length. Uh, so that interference thing they're talking about, if the pipe is too long, as the ram pump starts to cycle its next cycle, there's still a shock wave coming back through and it will actually interfere with the cycle and basically the ram pump will cancel itself. So you want to avoid that at all costs because obviously you're not going to move much water if the ram pump is canceling its own action. Uh, another option you can yeah you can use any kind of tank you could use a big water barrel anything you want as a uh, as a uh, standpipe. It doesn't have to be a pipe. It could be a barrel. It could be a tank. You just have to make sure that it gets enough water coming in and that it's tall enough that you don't have water overflowing and end up losing a lot of your water out of it. You want to be higher than the level of the water that the supply is coming from. And uh, we'll get into how to use the, uh, the water level, the line level here uh, later in this video. Okay. So I've started some leveling work and engineering work to prep for the ram pump installation <coughs> to get an idea of what the actual math numbers are going to be. Um, it is 53 feet to this big maple at the end of the long log and uh, so we're talking about just about 60 feet to our uh, our mark tree and we've got an elevation drop there of 70 inches so we're just under six foot to there um, so looking at that uh, I really want to have a minimum six foot so I'm going to go ahead and string another line off this way a little further and see if I can't pick up a few more inches by going that way. And then I'll figure out whether or not that makes sense uh, pipe-wise and all. But um, right now we got this line is perfectly level from the water level on the pipe. It's tied right at water level on the pipe and uh, it runs across level. I used a line level. Sorry for the sway. I'm trying to balance here on the log too. Sorry for the line. Uh, put, put the excuse me. Um, so I used a line level to level the line, so um, you could see, or so I could figure out what the elevation.
drop is and like I said it's 70 inches and um, well we're going to uh, run some more line out and get a better idea of uh, how much more drop we can get. Um, I also did a recalc on flow and looks like we're flowing about 15 gallons a minute today. Okie doke, just drawing another section of line up, carry the level uh, straight out from the pipe to the tree that I, we pinned to before. Now the new line runs out over here, downstream further, and tags out over there. Uh, it's, uh, well, I would say it's about eight foot off the stream bed over here at the end of the line. But I'm looking at this spot here which is about another 50 foot beyond that tree, so it would be 100 from the pond. And uh, where that tape is right now, from the level point on the line to the center of the stream bed, not the bank, the actual to the stream bed, is 83 inches. So we're just under 7 foot. So we get our 6 foot that way. And um, that's really awesome. That means we can produce plenty of pressure to get us up the hill and uh, to the tank or tanks uh, so um, yeah so it looks like this is going to be the spot we'll have to clear this all along the stream edges on either side to make working in here easy and then we'll have to run a, uh, a line out and um, deliver the water um, minimum drive pipe length for this pump design I think is 25 feet it might be 35 so uh, we'll probably come to that tree and then uh, start our drive pipe from the tree over. Uh, so we'll just come to that tree at level and then do our drop from there on in. And uh, that should do us for the ram pump. Uh, that's it for now. Um, yeah, higher it must be higher than the elevation of the source. Uh, then attach inlet pipe to the tank. The tank will act as a dissipation chamber. Uh, uh, for the water hammer shockwave just as a standpipe would. This option may, may not be viable if tank placement requires some sort of tower, but to, if the topography allows this, may be a more attractive option. Yeah, and that's another thing to consider. Depending on where you're setting up, your standpipe may have to be pretty tall in order to compensate for the terrain you're working with. And uh, I would not recommend putting a big uh, barrel on top of a tower unless you have serious construction skills because uh, water is pretty heavy at 8.33 pounds to the gallon. Uh, you get a 60 gallon drum full of that, you're talking close to 500 pounds. You don't want to end up with that coming down in your head. So be sure that that's not going to happen to you, I guess is what I would say. So this is my ram pump setup. Don't mind the pieces parts. Spring's coming. I got some uh, pieces, parts cleanup to do. Uh, but uh, so there's a spring over there in the reeds, which you can't see through the reeds at the moment. But rest assured, there is a spring there, and that's the spring that feeds this pond. It puts out nice clean water. We've had it tested down at Bard, at their lab, uh, and uh, regardless of the cleanliness of the water, you can still pump it, right? <coughs> so. This pipe coming across from the spring is a two inch pipe. It runs through the dam and then down to the stand pipe. The total distance of this uh, pipe, this two inch supply line to the stand pipe is 117 feet. And so uh, I'll pull up calculations here or maybe I'll throw them up here on the screen as an overlay. If you look at the charts and do the calculations, for a 1.5 inch ram pump, which is what I was, which I, which is what I calculated, there was enough water volume to support. Uh, you don't want to exceed. Well, let's see. For a one and a half inch ram pump with a two inch supply line, you don't want to exceed 100 feet to the ram pump, or 105 feet, something like that. Uh, 
or you'll end up with too much back shock going all the way up this line and so you have to put a sandpipe in to relieve that shock so this pipe runs at 117 feet and hits the standpipe and then there's another 35 feet that it goes from the standpipe to the ram pump we'll get into those calculations too when we get back inside and I can pull some nice numbers and charts and information up for you um, so the first thing I did was come out here and measure water volume coming out uh, that was before any of this piping was here so I had to use a, uh, a fairly uh, archaic method of measuring uh, so I measured the water volume at the time it was springtime it was getting about 10 to 15 gallons a minute I worked with springs before so I knew the spring could be developed out a little bit more uh, but I figured 10 gallons a minute <coughs> would supply um, an inch and a half ram pump uh, right on the edge and I knew I could scale the size of the pump down and I wanted to move as much as water as I possibly could so I started with inch and a half, knowing I could fall back to a one inch ram pump if I needed to.